Welcome back to House Gone Die, you guys. My name is Jarek. In this week's video, we will be talking about a DIY that I've worked on. Um, if some of you guys are familiar with the anthropology mirror, put it right over here-ish. Um, we'll be going over how I created this. Um, for those of you who are new, uh, we have launched my channel last week and we will be releasing videos weekly to kind of just go over the elements uh, that help me remodel the space in the dining room. Um, and with the second video, we'll be going over some techniques that I learned uh, to help create this high-end looking mirror. A ganda mirror. A ganda. Because it's what? House ganda. House, house, house ganda. Y'all know what it is. So um, this mirror, if you look at the price tag itself, it's a pretty hefty price. So I like to splurge on things, but there are just some things that I just don't find necessary uh, to spend money on. So, and at the same time, you can learn how to make it and like self care or whatever. I wanted to redo this mirror mostly because I did try this out maybe a few months ago, like around October-ish. Um, and like, it's not, I don't hate it, but I like don't love it. I'm like looking at it right now. Like it's actually cute. Um, let me show you. Let's get off the mount. I hope I don't mess this up. She's new here. Ooh, let's release it. Okay, there we go. All right, so. That is the original mirror that I created. I'll put up other images. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it looks nothing like the original from Anthropology. One, because it's a round mirror, and two, um, I didn't use the proper materials, and it is made out of air dry clay, which was really hard to manipulate. So yeah, in this video, we will be going, hold on. All right, so we're back. And so yeah, in this video, I will be going over a remake of that terrible, hideous mirror. Um, and I wanted to give a major shout out to one of my favorite YouTubers. If you guys are familiar with Miss Tina Le, I'll put a little thing here also. Um, where to start with her channel? I started following her maybe over a year and a half, two years now, and I just love the way that her mind thinks. She creates some really great handmade decor items. Um, I think she excels well in like her clay and paper mache, and that's what we'll be using today uh, to create the mirror. So I wanted to just give a huge shout out to Tina Lay and her DIY that she posted on this exact mirror. Without her, my hideous mirror would never have become what it is now. Um, so I'm happy to share how I did follow her tutorial. Um, there are gonna be some few minor tweaks. Um, and those are just like packaging material that I use um, based off of what like I had on hand. Um, and yeah, we'll just start the video. So if you have questions on it, definitely check it out. Um, no, if you have questions on it, definitely let me know down below in the comments. Oh yeah, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. I don't know what I'm pointing at because I'm still learning how to edit videos. So if the pointing is wrong, it's because I don't know how to edit and I'm new. But I'm not new to interiors. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. Of course, to get started, you are going to need your oval mirror, a piece of cardboard, and a pen just to outline your frame. Um, I'll go a little bit more in detail on where I found the mirror and leave it in the description box below. But I did find that having a lot of uh, shipments uh, that using the materials from packages like this cardboard box um, and a lot of the other materials you'll see later on really helped create this inexpensive portion of the frame. Now I use my phone as a guide so that I could follow the true design of the mirror and kind of just freehand the outline and shape of the frame. Um, I did find that going along the rim of the mirror will help as an additional guide on where the mirror would actually lay. Um, here you'll see I'm going about an inch in with measuring tape so I could create an additional buffer so I could uh, create additional room in case my build went a little bit overhand. Um, 
Using regular scissors, I went ahead and cut out the cardboard paper. I did notice that it got a little bit harder while I, as I got deeper into the cardboard, so found my handy X-Acto knife, which made it a lot easier to get that precision and overall get this cardboard cut up. Now, I used and saved a lot of the packaging material that I got from shipments, from bubble wrap to styrofoam to craft paper, anything that I had. I even utilized uh, gift tissue that I had from the holidays that really helped me manipulate the shape and actually really get it on the cardboard so that I could create these curves and these mountains uh, that the mirror naturally has. Um, I found that the glue did actually melt a lot of the bubble wrap, so I had to be very strategic on how I actually used the glue and the bubble wrap. Um, so yeah, definitely just have fun, squeeze the materials, and try to have it take shape. Um, tape is your best friend. I did notice that using tape along with glue really did help keep it in place and keep it in its true shape. Um, I later went ahead and covered the whole thing in tape, which you'll see in a little bit, uh, to help soften it up. Now the next step from here would be to apply the paper mache. I did find Activa Fast Mache at my local Michaels. Um, I'll drop a link in the description box below, but you could also find this on Amazon or any of your other craft stores. Uh, this specific one required for every five parts of mache to use one part of water. So I did find that having my scale available did help get those ratios even for me to ensure that I was getting the right consistency to get this pretty wet for me to actually start uh, laying it down on the frame. Now, as this was my first time using paper mache, I found it to be very versatile. Um, then the original mirror, uh, when I used air dry clay, I found it very easy to manipulate and actually apply to the frame. Um, I believe I took like three days creating the other mirror, but this one almost took me just a single day. All right, now it's time to get to mixing. When adding water to the paper mache, uh, I suggest adding a little bit of water at a time. Uh, drop the water in there in little increments um, until you see the paper mache get soft. Um, and eliminate some of that texture from the paper mache. Um, as you can easily add water to the paper mache rather than take it away, I found this to be very helpful. Now, as suggested by Tina, um, I added joint compound to the mixture to give it a more smooth texture, uh, kind of like pancake batter, uh, to help it apply and give that smooth finish. For the application, I did go with the rubber spatula that I found in the kitchen aisle. Um, I found this to be an easy, helpful tool to help smooth out the paper mache all over the frame. And as a final result, you can see everything here. We did allow it to dry overnight um, in time for its sanding. Now for the sandpaper, I did go with 120 grit paper and ensure that you have a face mask on so you don't inhale any of the dust. I really just focus on the areas that were a little bit bumpy that didn't dry over as smooth as possible overnight uh, with a keen focus on the bigger portions uh, of the frame. Now for the paint color, I did decide to go with Terracotta's Cool Concrete that I picked up at Michael's. Um, I decided not to go with the white just because of the contrast it would have had against my lime wash walls. Uh, this is my favorite part of any project. As you can see, your project reach the finish line and see what it would actually look like uh, as you wrap everything up. Um, and who doesn't love painting? All right, so now it's time to apply the mirror to the frame. Talk a little bit more about where I found the mirror, but to adhere this, I used E6000 and decided to go with the clear transparent. Um, I've used the white one before and I just didn't want to risk having some of the white glue show. So I went with the clear transparent glue. Um, the mirror itself I found from Home Depot within the bathroom section. It is 36 inches by 24. This was actually the second mirror I had to purchase as the original one was cracked when I attempted to remove the original framing. Um, and I just applied uh, some lightweight onto the mirror to ensure that the glue adhe adheres and stays in place, along with regular tape uh, to help hold that in place while the glue dried. 
uh, using a blow dryer was also very helpful, but I waited about six hours for this to dry before I was ready to hang it up. turnaround from the original mirror that I had. I'm just so in love with this and the guidance was just extremely helpful to get it to this end result. Um, I'm excited to share a few more videos to wrap up this overall dining space project and if you guys have any questions just let me know down below in the comments. Thanks again for watching.